So let's talk about this whole Seth Rollins Omos situation. You know, I, I, I get fans are automatically going to want to, you know, blame Vince and everything. So I just straighten my camera out there for a second. You know, I know they're automatically going to want to blame Vince, you know, for his booking and 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 basically be like, oh, he, you know, he's behind it and all that. And, you know, justifiably, you know, they have a right to to feel that way because, you know, Vince. Um, just sitting here, hold on. You know, um, there we go. Because you know, Vince, you know, has had a history of of booking things that don't make sense. You know, even from those that have worked behind the scenes with him, you know, they've pretty much said, "Hey, you know, those reports you've been hearing, you know, and everything, those reports, they're true. They are absolutely true. You know, Vince is making people write stuff mainly for himself. You know, not for anybody else." And, you know, for a wrestling show that's supposed to entertain millions and thousands and millions and billions, that's not normally a good a good direction to go in. So because of that, because of what he has done in the past, it's been etched in people's minds that no matter who, like, who could take control, like, no matter who would be put in charge of, you know, creative, he's mainly going to be the be-all, end-all when it comes to um, booking you know, especially when it comes to these kind of matches that we're seeing, you know, like with Seth Rollins and Omar. So he's automatically going to be the first that they will blame for this match occurring. You know, they're not going to come out and blame Triple H. They're not going to blame, believe it or not, Bruce Pritchard or Kevin Dunn. They're going to blame Vince. They're going to blame Vince. And again, they have a right to, to feel that way, and I'm not denying that. You know, I'm not denying that whatsoever. Um... But, you know, here's the thing. One person said something on one of the Facebook, I think one of the Facebook group pages or one of the, one of the, uh, the articles on Twitter. And they basically told, I think it was Alex, I believe, just Alex, that you can't automatically blame Vince if you don't have the proof. Like, where is your proof? Where is your physical, visual, actual proof that this is going on? And they do have a point for asking that question because, it's like, what evidence do we really have? Unless John Ross Sapp, who's a very reliable source, Mike Johnson, who's a very reliable source, Wade Keller, and others, Andrew Darian, you know, that all people who are known to have, you know, close connections with those within, anonymously with those in WWE that can tell them what's going on behind the scenes, unless any one of them, if not all of them, come out and confirm, yes, Vince is behind the Omos Rollins match, then what proof do we really have? What evidence do we really have? You know? I mean, if they do come out and say, yeah, your, your fears, your theories were correct, then, hey, continue putting the blame on there. Continue putting hashtag fire Vince on there. Continue basically, you know, visualizing in your mind, taking Vince McMahon and putting him like a witch or a warlock on the stake, tying him up and burning him to a crisp to get rid of him. You know, keep doing that. If it is, you know, just, if it is, you know, brought to, you know, brought to the forefront that Vince is behind it, you know. But again, we don't have the evidence to, to back that up. It's just the fact that everything he's done in the past decade or so, you know, for for the worse, has been etched and burned into those people's minds that anytime they see something like this, he's going to be the automatic first one to go to. And that's it. That is it. You cannot, you know, you cannot argue with them. You cannot debate them. You cannot show them, you know, potentially, you know, physical, if not legit evidence that, hey, you may be wrong or that you're obsessed or you have this Vince phobia, if you will. There's, there's no, you know, there's no getting, getting around to them. There's no getting around to them that, hey, you're letting your fear get the best of you. You're letting the, you know, the, the phobia, the fear of what he's done in the past, you know, corrupt your mind, you know, mess with your mind. You know, there's no getting around arguing with them. The only way that they will ever be at peace is if Vince McMahon is fired. You know, like when the merger happens and Ari Emanuel comes out and says, Vince, unfortunately, we got to let you go. You are no longer part of the company because you're nothing but you're nothing but trouble. You have controversy surrounding you. That's the only way they'll be satisfied. And then you'll have them going like, yes, he's gone. Happy days are here again. Because they will they will see what they feel is the heart of the problem being carved out and removed.
the cancer being removed. But then what happens if all of a sudden that occurs, but then we get similar situations that, you know, reek of this, but they have no Vince to blame anymore. You see, that's where it's going to get really interesting. Because then are they automatically going to go to Vince? No. The realization is going to dawn on them, oh, maybe we were too quick to judge. Oh, maybe Triple H isn't that good. You know, it's going to dawn on them. Or, oh, maybe maybe it was the Puerto Rican government that wanted that Omos Rollins match. You see, that, that day is going to come. I guarantee it. Because if you think Ari Emanuel is going to let Vince be involved with creative, you know, after the merger is done. No. He's going to stack Vince with so much, you know, work as executive chairman that, you know, Vince isn't going to have time to call up, you know, Triple H and say, hey, let me look at the scripts. Let me see what you've done. No. He's not going to do that. Vince is going to be too occupied with his new role. He's going to be too flood, too much flooded with, you know, work that he's going to be given by Ari Emanuel that he's not going to have time. And then where where is the blame going to go? Where is the blame going to go? And what's going to happen is people like JD, like Alex, like Solomon, they're going to wake up and they're going to realize that the re- that if they start noticing anything that resembles Vince, but there is no Vince to blame, you know what's going to happen? They're going to realize, oh, I let my fear, I let my fear of what Vince did in the past mess with my mind. I let it manipulate my thoughts. I should have had a clearer mindset. And when that day comes, I guarantee you, they're gonna come. Some of them are gonna come out here on YouTube, and they're gonna apologize. And they're gonna say, "Look, I let my fear," and they're gonna admit it. They're gonna say, "Look, we let our fear. I let my fear of Vince, what he did in the past, get to me. I shouldn't have done that. I should have been more clear-minded and realized, hey, maybe even someone like Triple H can make bad decisions." Or maybe, you know, sometimes, you know, matches are out of Triple H's, you know, power because a certain government, you know, wants them. For And that could be the truth. That could be the legit truth. We don't know. We don't know. Um, the, 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 point, the point is, at the end of the day, Vince is always going to be the easy target to go to for blame when it comes to these kind of matches. There's no getting around that. No denying it. He's always going to be the easiest target to go to. And that's a fact. That is a fact. I mean, we can we can say you need proof and everything, but if you're somebody that, you know, pretty much has seen what Vince has done, you know, in the past to the company, you know, creatively, just for his own amusement and entertainment, and you're hearing reports even from those that used to work in closely with Vince and creative, kind of backing up what you're saying, or what you're fearing, then yeah, you know, you can't honestly blame people for going to Vince first to blame. You really can't. But to me, I think at the end of the day, we just got to wait. We got to see what Sean Ross Sapp says. We got to find out what Wade Keller says. We got to find out what Mike Johnson says. And if they, and Andrew Zarian, and if they all say basically, you know, the same thing in some shape or form that yes, it is Vince that was behind the match, then hey, you're justified, you're justified and you're blaming. But if they come out and say no, and they say, oh, it was the Puerto Rican government, you guys are going to look like fools. You're going to look like fools. And people are gonna, the people that get on you now, the people that get on them now, are going to be laughing in the face, saying, ha ha, see, you, 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 you made a fool of yourself. You made yourself look stupid. They're going to get on them about that. And then what's going to happen over time, just like I mentioned moments before, is they're going to realize they that they're letting this fear of what Vince did in the past mess with them. And they shouldn't let it mess with them. They should be like, they should they should be like, uh, you know, looking at a match like this and be like, you know what? It may look like it's Vince behind us, but I'm going to wait until I get proof. I'm going to wait until it comes out that either yay it is Vince or it's not. That's what they need to do. That's what they need to do. But we also have to remember this too. Triple H is a fan of old school. He likes to be old school at times. And one of the things about WWE in the old school days is they used to actually, no matter what event it was, whether it was in the States or out of country, they would book random matches that didn't really make any sense or really didn't have no storyline to them. 
even if they tried to add story to it, you know, a week before, they added them for the sake of adding them to feel time. Because they knew, hey, we can make, like, hey, we, we could try to make something out of this, give it a reason, you know, give it a reason for happening. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they just put it on there. I mean, how many times did we have a WrestleMania, if you will, um, happen, you know, and let's say Tito Santana was put into a random match? How many times? How many times did that happen? A lot. You know, Tito Santana, for, for example, I think Tito Santana, WrestleMania 6, he was put into a match with the Barbarian. What, what was the build for it? There was no build. There was no build. You know, what else? Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Rick Martel and Coco Beware. You think the logical direction would be Tito Santana, you know, Rick Martel at WrestleMania Six, right? Because of the feud. Nope. They went Martel, Coco Beware. What sense did that make? That made no sense. But they put it on there because basically it gets everybody on the card. Yes. But it was done because they had to fill time, and they had a quota to meet. You know. Did they try to give some logical storyline behind reason behind it before? Perhaps. But they did it because they had a quota of for the match card to meet. Whether it made sense or not. So this is no different. WWE has been known. WCW has been known. AEW has been known to do these kind of things, even if they don't make sense. You know, I mean, tonight on Rampage, on the special Saturday night edition of Rampage, they have an eight-man tag. Yeah, they have an eight-man tag where on one side you have the varsity what is it? You have the varsity athletes and Slim J against the team of FTR and Lethal and, and Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett who last I checked were, were heels and FTR is the face. What sense does that make? You know, it doesn't make sense. In my opinion. You know, where's the logical in that? Unless Jared and Lethal turn face for no reason. What sense does that make? It makes no sense. But it's being put on there because they need to feel quota. And maybe they're going to get a storyline built out of it. We don't know. The point I'm getting at, at the in closing, is until we get proof whether or not this was a Vince McMahon move, or was a Triple H move to get Vince, you know, away from creative, to satisfy Vince's you know, fetish for the big man matches and whatever, or if it was something called by, you know, called for and by the Puerto Rican government, we have to reserve judgment. We have to. And we also have to remember WWE, you know, has been known to do this even in the past. And other companies that are even going on now currently, as I mentioned, or have been existing in the past, have been known to do this too. So we can't just put blame on blame him unless we have evidence. And again, like I said, Triple H is an old school guy. You know, who's to say he wasn't a fan of the random matches that were put on there? Again, like I said, WrestleMania, there have been various WrestleManias, Rumbles, Survivor Series, and SummerSlams where this happened. And there was no logical reason behind it. But they, you know, but they happened. And they were good. So, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Alright? Who knows what's going to happen here? And again, we'll just have to see who's really behind it. See what the reports come out and say. But let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Comment below. Live chat during the premiere. And I will talk to you later. But let's preserve judgment.